and the bad, the ugly and the pretty like it is everywhere. There is no way that's perfect. Hi guys, my name is Vanessa. Welcome back to my channel. Before we get into today's business, happy International Women's Day. I am so proud to be a woman. I am so privileged. I must have done something well or right in my former life to be a woman. Being a woman is the greatest honor of all. I am honored to be a woman. I am privileged to be a woman and I am super proud to be a woman. Here is all the strong women in the world breaking boundaries, breaking societal norms, breaking all the restraints society has placed upon us. Making a way for yourself in your own way. Here is the strength. And here is the breaking more and more and more and more and more and more and more history. Here is the making history. And here is the first female vice president of the United States. Rights. Happy belated independence day to my Ghanaians. I think I should be called the Ghanaian. I'm thinking for it. I've been better than this too much. I will be later in the end. So, Ghana, you've been able to get to know me for a while. You've been amazing. So, yeah, I've been better than this day. Here's to us. Here's to freedom. And here's to more years. And so, that if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It's a new channel. Please subscribe to it. And like and comment on the video if you like it. Hope you like it. Hope it's painful. <laughs> so yes, there was any video I saw in Kelly. I've been seeing a lot of videos on YouTube. It's just like there's there's a um, silent war going on between Nigerians and Ghana and Ghanaians. This shouldn't be so. I don't know why. I've watched a lot of videos. Some Ghanaians called Nigerian slaves. Some Nigerians called Ghanaian slaves. It's always a case of us against them, or them against them. It shouldn't be so. It's only a big, little bit embarrassing that we as Africans, West African, watch potentially one they were fighting against ourselves in this battle, battle of superiority. Why? Why? Um, our colonial masters, they wanted. They knew if we were able to come together and become a strong body who will be unstoppable so they place these norms, they place these boundaries these invisible boundaries between countries and now there is oh they, she's Nigerian, oh she's Ghana, oh they are this, oh they are that there is this battle and it's not just between Ghana and Nigeria I think I've been noticing it with, this, with several African countries I think it's time we put a stop to all that, I think it's time we start behaving like one and i think it's time we start coming together so ooh, i've been living in ghana now since 2018 that's about three years now yeah so i relocated from to ghana 2018 i think the first time i visited ghana was 2016 actually i think i stayed for those couple of weeks then i went back then i relocated 2018 so i've been here for three years now so then I decided to share my experience in Ghana, the good and the bad, the ugly and the pretty, like it is everywhere. There's no way that's perfect. And everything I say, they would, they would just be my personal opinions. These are not, I'm not generalizing anything, I'm not saying anybody. These are just personal opinions, my personal experiences, things I've experienced. So, I didn't look at the camera because I wanted to leave Nigeria or whatever. I had the business of was living in Nigeria and I was. First experience in Ghana when I landed at the airport. I think the, the immigration guy that acted to me was really nice. So my impression was like, ah, they are so nice. So I had this um, thank you coming in that, oh, yeah, they're nice people. So he helped me through the immigration processing, through customs. They should have to check my bags, the regular stuff, made everything really easy and it was super sweet and mostly when 
men are sweet so ladies like that i always think it's because they wanted something but he didn't he was just a nice man they're not all like that though we have had other experiences with other immigration officers in that airport since i've been here because i go and come so but that first experience was really nice so yeah so i came in i left the airport and when i came to pick me at the airport to go home my estate was mostly made of nigerians so i was like in a nigerian community in nigeria community in ghana so i wasn't really experiencing more of ghanians yeah my first uh, cultural research was when i started going out what I came initially, I took some days, I was just indoors trying to get used to my new environment and life. So yeah, it, it took me some days so I actually started going out. So the first time I I think the first time I went out in in, in Ghana. What surprised me most was I think because it was a language, they speak more of their their local language tree. So it was really difficult for me to understand what they were saying. So I had to do, there was a lot of when I'm talking and because I'm in Nigeria, if I'm speaking English, it's quite different from the accent. So the accent was kind of a barrier, so I have to try describing everything. You, It was really difficult to communicate, so that was one thing. The one thing I was, I don't know, it wasn't like a downside. I think when you go to a new, a new, a new country or even in, like in Nigeria, when you go to a new state, there are different languages. You always find it difficult to understand them. The only uh, uh, good thing about Nigeria and different states is we all speak Pidgin English, we all speak English. So if I can't understand your language, just switch to Pidgin English and it's just like that. So I think the, the language was a bit of a, was a bit of a shock in the cultural research. And I wasn't used to it. I think I can now understand a few and speak a few so to all the Ghanaians it is said <laughs> when you go to uh, the local market to buy stuff immediately you you say hi how much is this you know you are Nigerian already so the next thing they will ask you are you Nigerian I don't know why it matters to them a lot if you are Nigerian or not I think we're all African we're all the same color but I think it matters to them so the next question they will ask you are you Nigerian I'm like ah yeah I'm Nigerian I didn't know they were inflating prices for me till I became friends with some Ghana, so we're not going to talk about that because that's not a general thing. That's just, that's just, I think it's everywhere, so it's not like, not secluded or limited to just, to just Ghana alone. So yeah, the language was a bit of a, was a bit of a shock to me. Then the number two thing was the cost of living. Yeah, the cost of living. At least when I started saying prices of things in Ghana compared to Nigeria currency, I was like, oh, oh, but is it worth it? Yes, definitely worth it. So the best things I noticed about Ghana when I entered Ghana because it was an evening flight from the airport to my house to my estate where I live in Accra. It was light everywhere. I was I was looking at the window like ah everywhere was so bright, there was no generator noise, everywhere was calm, everywhere was well I don't have to put it but it was light and we'll go home this light. Ah maybe I was thinking oh maybe there's light today. Let's see, thank God. Someone will sleep better. And they want to sleep with AC and the rest. Then the next day there's light. It's okay. Then the other day there's still light. I was not like how to was like ah this but they don't take light here because I'm not used to experiencing this in Nigeria. <laughs> so, yeah, no, they don't take light like that here. They take light about twice in a month, sometimes once in a month. And before they take it, they, they make this this um, announcement about light or maybe they, are, they want to fix something. I was like, are you serious? 24 hours light, say yes. Ah, hey, hey, I've arrived with them. Price is on a very high side because of the electricity high yeah, but if you, are, if you are seeing this electricity that I don't think it matters more if the prices are high or not that there is water coming from that there is uh, that there is they have this uh, water board that functions the electricity department functions they have good access to 
And I'm not saying there are good roads everywhere in Accra because they're not. But most of the major roads they are good because they, 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 I, I think they, they have a better working system than, than Nigeria because the infrastructure and the rest. That being said, I'm not saying all Ghanians right now, I'm saying some because I've, I've, I've had the experience with some good ones and some bad ones, but I think an average Ghanaian has this. Because I was trying to say that the colonials place this whole us against them. So I think once you see you're yeah, yeah, in Nigeria, they become a little bit hostile. Not necessarily hostile. I just think they behave towards which is not necessarily strange. I think it happens in every country when they see a foreigner. I think here the Nigerians are, I think some of the Nigerians did some stuff and maybe they're generalizing it. I don't know, I'm talking about my experiences. They have a lot of food, amazing food, I must say. I'm just not very adventurous when it comes to food. Like even in Nigeria, I don't, if I go to Lagos, I don't eat Amala. I'm used, like I'm in Delta, so I'm used to eating my Delta food. If I go to other states, like when I was calling in those states, I didn't used to eat local diseases there. So I think the same thing that's happening to me here. I haven't really taboo much to their food that my brother has, and they really have an amazing food. It's just my. But I do eat Wachi. Wachi is my best kind of food. I love it. I have a special place I buy from, so. They have lots of food, yeah, you can experience a whole lot of different delicacies, different from what I used to. They have an interest in my experiences in Ghana. I'll be making videos talking about my day-to-day -day life, what I do. When I started fashion school, I write a BS in Nigeria before I came to Ghana. I started my business in Ghana here. Yeah. Life generally is in Ghana. As an intro and living in Ghana, I'm making more videos. It's just an intro to it. So, I mean, please, compared to Nigeria, yes, it is safer. I've been in Ghana for three years. The later I was robbed of this last December, and it was more of a burglary than a robbery. I live in a townhouse, so there's no burglary proof. It's a sleep in the it's an estate. The secured estate, they were able to gain entrance and took some laptop. Just some electronics in general. Don't go out in, in, in Ghana and be self conscious of your bag or your phone that someone is going to, to, to smash it. Don't hold on extra tight to your bag like you do in Lagos because, like, it's not even in Nigeria, like, in, like in my own state, crime rate is really low. But when you go to most of the commercial cities, like Lagos and Onisha. I think the crime rate is high because of the the population and because of the commercial the commercial place and there are different people from different tribes, different religion, like different countries, just a jam packed of different entities. So the crime rate is a bit high compared to states where things are a bit calm. So like you go to the third state, they are still crime. It's not I, I, like I can't be in data and be so conscious of now. I can go out in, at night in data, but I can't do that in Lagos. So one thing here in Ghana is you can go out in data in Ghana, you are safe. It's really, it's a really safe place. But I think they are, they are, they are, they are. I don't want to, to, to sound to come off. But I think as security personnel, they, they might. I think they can do a little better. In the sense that they are a little bit in Nigeria to be police in Nigeria to be corrupt. But the, the whole thing here is the police in Ghana here they are more more corrupt and street and whatever towards foreigners. Those Nigerians especially they they see you and you, and you just say hi, you know you're Nigerian already and they start treating you like a common criminal like Number one, I'm in your country legally. Number two, this is a, an ECOWAS country. I should be able to move around without you harassing me because I'm Nigerian or looking for me to give you money. They took my my my, my Apple 5 series when they, they did a, a stop and session. One of them took it there. Then 
I think it disappeared because I was like, I was holding a wash. Somebody took the wash among you guys. It was, I'm not going to get into all of that. I'm just saying, the rate of vibrating in their police system and the rate of injustice in the police system towards foreigners, towards Nigerians, who can talk about just my experiences and the people I know. It's really, it's really sad. I think that's the worst thing I've had said. Like my estate, I think we're the only Nigerian citizen in this estate. Everybody is it's really nice. We don't, we're not really like older Nigerians and we're Ghanaian. But that wasn't the case in my former estate. There was this estate I was living in. Oh my, I don't want to be calling estate name, but there was this segregation. They are Nigerians and we're Ghanaians and they treat you really, it's okay. We'll get into all of that later. So, it's hot. I, I, I've never been in a girl in my life, but now I'm in a girl in, in, in Ghana. But you get used to it over time. I think now I'm used to it. The first time I came, I go out. My God, it's people like I was suffocating. Like, it was so hot. Like, I'm in Delta. I'm in Delta. I live in Delta. I'm not really used to the hot environment. And it gets hot in Delta during the dry season. But nothing as... as I'm not saying terrible or even but not even as hot as this. Ghana is hot. And if you are coming to Ghana, I need to prepare that, that Ghana is like always hot. Apart from that, I'm not seeing it. And it barely rains in Ghana, so that's my experience. That's just touching some corners of my experiences in Ghana. My experiences in Ghana. So, yes, if you, have, if you are planning on visiting and you need to. I need someone to tell you where I went to which, which I was making the videos on. Please come back, subscribe, and there will be more of this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.